Hey guys, today I believe we're going to do the calibration uh, portion of, well, my intended things to do. It's on my list, it's been on my list for a while, and I think today is a good, good enough day to uh, sit down and focus on this for a little while. Anywho, um, we're gonna we're gonna go from from beginner to advanced here, and I just want to make a disclaimer here before we get too too deep into this, uh, give give you an idea of what you're in store for, and uh, <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I've learned, what it is. Um, I'm sure some of you out there are gonna you know get your hackles up and and you know you're gonna disagree. Well, that's fine. Disagree all you want, but do it nicely. Um, I, I encourage comments. I encourage uh, conversation in the comments section. If uh, you have different experience, hey, I'd love to hear about it. But uh, no meanies. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> keep it nice. Keep it civil. And uh, hey, we're all going to get along here. Hopefully everybody gets something useful, uh, educational out of this. And uh, I'm going to do my best anyway to uh, make it so. Uh just want to let you know that uh, I'm not trained in any of this. I had to learn all this stuff myself the hard way by literally, you know, spending years of time reading everything I could get my hands on and then putting it to practice. You know, the same way I became a, a master technician. I didn't go to school for it. I went to my bedroom. I read. I went to the family two-car garage <laughs> and I put what I thought I learned to practice. You know, and I, I learned it that way, the hard way. Um, so anyway, um... Uh, we're going to go from beginner to advanced here. I'm going to do some free methods, and then I'm, we're going to slowly get into uh, spending a dime. And then we're going to get into spending, well, more. <laughs> there is a point of diminishing return. So always keep this in mind. With, with every step and stage here, I'll, I'll do my best to spell it out clean, cleanly, plainly, so that uh, you know everybody is on, on board or at least on the same page. But uh, you can get crazy with this stuff you can get super involved you can spend a shit ton of freaking money and you're not going to necessarily get any better results so uh, keep that in mind there is a point of diminishing return both in time and money spent here so uh, yeah with that said we're going to get into uh, the beginner level of this the uh, the free the cheap and uh, kind of go from there Probably the easiest thing for any and all of you to do, um, because this will work any which way you do it. Uh, you could you could put this file onto uh, a thumb drive and plug it right into your TV, and you can calibrate a port that way. Um, you can use a computer, which is what I'm using currently, to drive this screen. Uh, you can burn a disc, you, uh, put it into a, a, a uh, DVD or Blu-ray player, and run through it that way. Uh, you got, uh, yeah, you got some, some decent options here. This is what I would recommend as probably the easiest uh, and very most basic of, well, of everything. There's an introduction in here. You, you just go through it. Um, there, there's an introduction in here, uh, some talking points. And then there's some tests, such as that. Um, now, to see, uh, you're going to have to turn the lights off. But uh, we're, we're, we're getting into that. I'll, I'll, sh I'll do the, the, the basic stuff here. I'll show you the basic stuff. And then we're going to get into how you actually use some of the basic stuff. But uh, this, uh, this is probably going to be your, uh, well, most basic and, and, well, cheapest option. Because it's literally free. It costs you nothing. I will show you where to go. Um, I'll put a link in the description, but uh, you're going to go check out these guys here. Uh, the uh, avsforum.com. Uh, it's free. Uh, you got to scroll down. You got to do some reading here. It's 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 in there. You can download it download it in, a, in several different ways. Um, pick the version that you know works best for you. But this particular program uh, will literally run you through some real real simple and real basic calibrations but mostly what you're going to get out of it is going to be black and white you got you're going to set your, your your white levels and you're going to set your black levels um you just do it with your naked eyeball or if you're wearing glasses well it's not quite naked but uh, you know what i mean so uh you're just going to turn the lights off give yourself you know a proper viewing condition 
and uh, yeah, you're going to stare at the screen and watch some things blink and make adjustments accordingly. Uh, it's dirt simple. Uh, in this case, what I would be doing would be uh, contrast and then uh, the uh, brightness. Brightness and contrast is literally a uh, white level and uh, black level on most TVs nowadays. But uh, I recommend that you just, well, read the, uh, or not read, but watch the uh, intro. Hey, where is it? Uh, up in how? Huh? TV calibration. Yeah, this is where, you know, they spend 30 minutes and they talk you through it you know they, they tell you what's what and uh, it's because they already do it here i'm not going to waste your time i'm not going to waste my time going going over it either but they uh they tell you what you need to know and you just download it it's it, it's free so uh, i highly suggest and highly recommend you start here if you if you uh if you find that this works well enough for you and you don't want to go further well guess what you know you're just done right there i don't think that it's uh you know it's good enough for any kind of color calibration but uh, it's definitely good enough for getting whites and blacks. And that's half your battle right there. The other part of your battle is, well, you got to tell that the, uh, <laughs> whatever your uh, 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 source is, you got to tell your source and your uh, TV, depending on which way you're hooked up and what's feeding who and who's talking to what, you got to tell the thing what white is. The TV really doesn't know. It's best guess, it's factory set, and it's always, always wrong. So you got to get your, your whites and your blacks, you know, your, your brightness and your contrast, and then you got to set your white balance. You got to tell the thing what color white actually is. And actually that's done with gray. <laughs> it's a little confusing, but uh, we got uh, we got tools to help us do that. And uh, that's that's later we're getting we're getting there but uh, just thought i'd show you the free the cheap the easy stuff right now and this is probably where i would begin uh the avs forum.com um i i will put a link to it like i said and uh, just download it and run through it the next thing on the list of uh cheap free and still damn good uh you'll see don't don't pay no attention to this star rating but it's an app for Android. Uh, I believe there is also a, a uh, Mac version, an Apple version, rather. But uh, people are, I mean, literally, they're just fucking crying over spilt milk. <laughs> they're, they're, they're crying because, I guess, the, the, the program doesn't cast, it doesn't work wirelessly. Well, for Christ's sake, I mean, these guys are giving you a, a tool for free, and people just want more. It's not their fault you don't have the right hardware. I have the hardware. It's not a problem for me. I can, I have a mini HDMI port on my tablet. And uh, I physically uh, plug into my TV. And it's automatically recognized. And now my display is duplicated. So that's what they're mostly complaining about here. That's why it's got such a low star rating. But it's a good program. It works fine. It uses the camera on either your phone or your uh, tablet to see for you you know uh, you know you don't got to trust your eyes you got to trust your camera eh, it's some good some bad in that regard i mean because your camera's probably not you, your camera probably doesn't know what the hell color white is either uh, everything is uh pretty much similar in this regard i don't care who makes what you got to tell the thing what color white actually truly is before you can trust a thing so uh it's all part of the calibration process. But if you wanted to use a tool, um, you know, you're, you're starting to get into the, the, the colorometer, the colorimeter, colorometer. Yeah, colorimeter, I guess is how it's pronounced. You're starting to get into that area, but you're using the camera and crap that you already have. You didn't have to spend any money yet. But uh, we're getting there. Anyway, I like the tool. It has worked fine, but it's it's going to basically do the same thing as that uh, DVD from the AVH or AVS yeah AVS forum it's basically going to be the, uh, rinse a repeat of that except now you're using an Android application to do what that disc was already doing for you so uh, just thought I'd throw it out there it's another one that uh, I have used I like it it works fine if you have the hardware if you can hook a, a phone or a tablet into your HDMI port on your TV 
then you can use the the camera that you already have to basically uh yeah eliminate your eyeballs you don't have to trust your eyes you just got to trust your camera um uh, yeah I, I i think i'd go with the first version but uh i'm just throwing it out there it's another option for you next on the list um uh, now here you're gonna have to spend a dime uh i think it's like 35 bucks for uh the uh the blu-ray and then there's a 4k this version which is a couple bucks more uh it's a dvd blu-ray whatever you know that thing uh, you're going to need a, something that can play it naturally, a Blu-ray player of some sort of some kind. Um, you could probably rip uh, an ISO out of it if you have the tools and the technology there. But uh, otherwise, you're going to need something that's literally going to have, have to be able to uh, play this for you. But, um, you know, for not a lot of... You're going to get some of the best uh, patterns. Um, industry standard, I mean, this is... These guys are uh, top-notch in their field. Uh, I don't know of any that are better. Um, they work closely with uh, all the big names, all the big manufacturers, and uh, uh, I forget who it was. Somebody had uh, some of their test patterns. In, I think it was LG. I'm pretty sure it was LG. Somebody had their test patterns installed into their ROM, their, their reader-only memory chip, uh, for specifically for calibration. Um they, they spent the time, they spent the money, and, you know, they're not asking a lot in return. They're really helpful people. If you have a question, I mean, it ain't nothing but an email or a phone call, and you will get an answer. Uh, also, in the forums, I mean, there's probably nothing that you could ask that hasn't already been asked. So, you know, the information is already out there. But uh, highly recommend. I don't currently have them because I have a different method of doing. But I have seen uh, the... Uh, the demonstration, if you will, I, I I know what know what it's all about. It's excellent stuff. I would still highly recommend it, even though I don't personally use it. But uh, I have no uh, no issues, you know, whatsoever recommending to you. Um, should you choose to go down this, uh, you know, <laughs> this rabbit hole, because it's only getting you started. It it's gonna really wet your whistle. And to use any of their discs properly, fully, completely. You will need a colorimeter. You're gonna to have to spend a dime. Uh, it's 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 starting to cost a little bit now, but uh, if you have more than one TV to calibrate, um, you know it's it's worth a small investment now to uh, be able to deal with this stuff. You know, five years, eight years, maybe ten years down the road, because technology is changing, but this stuff works the same way. It, it's you know the 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 how and the what and the why. It's all the same shit. It's not gonna change. Uh, that the 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 driving force of what makes light and color that might change, but red is still red, green is still green, blue is still blue. You just need something, a tool, a device, a uh, tool, a device, and software sometimes to uh, literally be able to see that. So yeah, um, you know, like I said, somewhere well under fifty bucks. I think your uh, one version is thirty five bucks, I think, and uh, the other is like forty five. Uh, available on Amazon as well, but uh, yeah, I'm just sending you right here. Spears and Munsell, uh, these guys are uh, top notch, so highly recommend. If you want to do, you know, a disc, if you want to have a physical disc in your hand and use a player, um, of course, now that that does limit you somewhat. You're you're not going to be quite as capable unless, like I said, you could use a. Uh, well, there are tools. <laughs> you could uh, rip an ISO out of that. And then you can play it, you know, via other ways. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. But, uh, yeah. All right, this is uh, an excellent option. I highly recommend. Um, Got to spend a dime, but it's not expensive. Uh, it's still going to be a lot of the same stuff, rinse and repeat. you 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 got to set your, your black level, your white levels. And then you got to get to, you know, what color is actually white. Um, what, those things right there get you 90% of the way. It's the, it's that last ten percent that literally it, it I don't know it, it puts a bug in the back of your brain. Yeah, you, once you start seeing the numbers, it it, it becomes really addictive, and uh, and you kind of can't leave it alone. You, you get that extra you know two percent out of it because you know because you can see it on paper, but you can't see it with your own eye. That's 
that's what I was trying to get at. There is a point of diminishing return. So keep that in mind with every step and every stage along the way here. Either you're going to spend too much time and not get good, good enough results for what it is that you're after, or you're going to spend too much money or too much time and still not get, you know, any better or good enough results for what you're after. Some of that might come down to hardware. Some of it's just going to come down to, you know, this shit ain't worth it. <laughs> like for example, I could spend $5,000 on gear easily to do this stuff. Why would I do that when I have a $900 TV? You know what I mean? Where's, where's, where's the net return on that? I'm not going to make this thing. You know, I'm not going to make a $900 TV, a $900 TV run like a $5,000 piece of equipment it's just never going to do that all i can do is get it as close as it is well uh, about as close as it is capable of and you know call her a day because coming from out of the box factory settings to what i am able to achieve um with either free and or cheap methods man it's night and day difference and uh you, you you'll see what i'm talking about when you do this stuff but uh anywho I don't want to ramble too much here. I'm just saying this is a good place to uh, spend a dime if you're ready to uh, get a little more serious. And we're going to move on to another method coming up next. And next, now we're going to spend some money. Not a lot of in the overall scheme of things, but uh, we're going to spend quite a few dimes on this one. You need a colorimeter. Got to get it. Because uh, for what I'm about to show you, there ain't no other way. This uh, this is the model that I have. You can go with a lesser model. Of course, they are they are quite plentiful. There's that uh, spider. Eh, can't remember. Something spider. Eh, whatever. Um, that spider thing is too awfully, got awful slow. I don't recommend it because, well, I mean... Literally, in this case, you're going to get more for spending more. So, at a certain point, you just got to bite the bullet and spend the dimes, the dollars, in the sense that it's going to cost. Uh, this is the manufacturer's website. You can get it, you know, a couple bucks less, like on eBay, for example. I have the Pro model because it is capable, it's, it future proof is proof. Yeah, proof is, that's a word, it's a word. I just, you know, I said it, so it's a word. Um, it'll future proof, well, me. For example, because I'm going to be doing this stuff for every screen and every TV that I have now and every screen and or TV that I'm going to have in the future. So I want something that is going to be able to handle the later and greater, brighter and more, you know, well, brighter. <laughs> That's basically what you get. It's good for 2000 nits, whereas the, mm, I can't remember, the, the next step down from this, uh, they have a pro and then they got to step down from it which is uh, uh, in here somewhere. I won't, uh, well, you can you can check this stuff out at your leisure, but uh, they got to step down from this, which is, you know, a little bit cheaper. I think it was like 90 bucks cheaper or something like that. Yeah, 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 I mean, it's considerably cheaper, but, you know, we're already, you know, finally, finally, everything is about, you know, a thousand nits. And uh, it's only getting brighter as the literal months go by. Things, you know, as technology keeps changing, things are just getting brighter. So uh, I got the one that's that's rated for 2,000 nits. Mm, so I have a little bit of uh, wiggle room there. I got a little, <laughs> I got a little room to grow with it uh, before I got to spend more money. But you need software to run this, which it comes with, but it is quite lackluster. Um, you got, you should install it because there's drivers in there, but, uh, and I know if you spend the money on this, you're going to use the software and it's going to do a thing for you, but, uh, it's not going to get you where you probably really want to be because it requires that you run a computer. It requires that you use a computer. It only really works with a computer. What I'm going to show you will work everywhere else and everywhere also, including a computer. But it will it will work everywhere else. You need the hardware, and then you need the software. And this is the software that we're going to focus on. Uh, there are others. There are many others. Uh, there are some that are free, which I'm going to briefly cover. Um, but uh, then there's some very expensive stuff. And basically, what you need to do is uh, use a colorimeter with this, and 
yeah what it was just showing you down here you get the uh that's the main interface looks you know something like that but uh when you're going through the calibration process you'll see something that looks a whole lot like that and that's how you make physical adjustment to your screen that's what sets your white level that's what tells you know well <laughs> you can do a whole bunch with that but uh that's basically what's going to tell uh the system what what color white actually is and once you do that i mean literally you are 90 percent done you don't have to go any further than that and i'm, I'm going to show this to you we're getting into it but uh I, like i said this stuff is involved it's, it's it's lengthy i don't want to ramble i don't want to go over stuff that's already been done well by other people but uh i'm trying to make a very thorough very complete tutorial here uh, something that I was looking for and I spent some time searching and I just couldn't find it so I'm trying my best to create what I was looking for back then so uh, hopefully it helps somebody out but uh, anyway this is what we're gonna focus on like I said and uh, there's a, there's a couple other things I'm gonna show you real quick but uh, this is where we're gonna spend the bulk of our time all right one of the other options here uh, is also free but again uh, you've got to spend the money on a uh, colorimeter. Otherwise, you know, free software ain't going to do you no good in this case. Uh, this one is uh, HCFR. Uh, been around for a long, long time. I believe... I believe they were French. A French company started this and... Eh, well, I don't know. You can, you can read all about it <laughs> if you want to. Uh, again, at the uh, ABS forum... Uh, I will put links to everything as always, but uh, yeah, there is uh, download and there's there's instructions and there's you know everything you need to know all in there. But you will still need, like I said, hardware. You're gonna need something. You're gonna need something that can see color. Uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> there's just no way around it. Um, and the same with this. Now. This is not free software. This is an outrageously expensive software. At least it can be, uh, depending on which uh, version that you get. But uh, again, you must have the hardware. You got to have a colorimeter. Otherwise, the software will do you no good at all. But this software is more capable than anything else that's out there. Um, by more capable, I mean it can literally burn the ROM in your uh, television. For example, uh, what I'm going to do is all software based and it's all done with software, uh, tweaking and tuning software uh, on my uh, computer, for example. Uh, what you can do with this stuff, however, is you can, re well, you can, you can burn a calibration file right into the re uh, random access memory or random, I'm sorry, ROM, read only memory on your uh, um, LG television. Uh, I think it works. It works with a handful of them. Uh, Samsung, uh, LG, uh, I think uh, Sony is in there. Um, I, there's, you'll see. I mean, when, when you start looking at uh, some of the stuff that, uh, yeah, when you start looking at some of the stuff that uh, it can do, it'll it'll spell it all out for you. But uh, uh, it's a little more, you know, involved software. It's well, you got to pay for it, so you know, <laughs> it's more involved in that way too. But uh, it can do a little more. It can do, well, it can do things that the free shit can't. Some of you might find this, you know, your your better option. Um, but for me, it's an absolute point of zero return. Because I can manually calibrate this stuff myself. I don't need, for my specific use case scenario, I don't need, a, um, you know, software to do this for me. I can do it my damn self. Thank you very much. And I can do it on any port that I that I choose because well of the way that I'm doing things but for you for example like if you're using a blu-ray player um, yeah you're only gonna be able to get so far and you're either gonna have to change what you're gonna have to change the uh, the the calibration file from your blu-ray player that does that will do it for you or you got to change the uh, calibration file from the TV so that it, it can reinterpret uh, the colors and whatnot from your that are being sent from your blu-ray player um, you're not going to have a computer involved like I am. You're going to have to do it literally with hardware. So in that case, I mean, this is pretty much your only option. I don't know of anything else out there that's doing it or that is capable of doing it. Uh, so, I mean, that's something to keep in mind as well. But 
like I said, <laughs> that that two percent, that five percent, hell, that ten percent difference that you might be able to get is just a number on a piece of paper. You'll never freaking see it with your own two eyeballs. So once you get it there, once you get it good, it's probably as good as it's ever going to need to be for for you, me, and well, just about everybody else in this world. There is a point of diminishing return, so always keep that in mind, both with time, the money, and the uh, tools, the equipment, the software, all that. Uh, that's why I'm trying to trying to make a, a, a short and sweet uh, kind of intro here. But uh, I, hey, this stuff is involved. I can't help it. It just takes what it takes. So, uh, yeah, grab a grab a, grab a beer, grab some popcorn, get some coffee, whatever, because uh, we're just getting started. But uh, I'm gonna run you through a little bit of the the, the easy stuff. Gonna literally walk you through some of the like the DVD stuff and 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 uh, do a little show and tell there. But uh, where we're gonna focus primarily is going to be on the uh, uh, close the damn like the uh, display cow. That's where we're gonna focus using this tool right here. So enough talking. We're gonna get into it. I just thought real quick here. I'm gonna give you a a, a quick little show and tell. And uh, the rest of it, I mean, like I said, this is that uh, that, that DVD that you can download for free from uh, uh, the uh, these guys here, ABS Forum. Uh, click on this. They, they, they talk about everything you need to know right there. But uh, just to show you real quick what we're what we're getting into. Uh, these are all kinds of different test patterns. You, you're not going to be able to do some of this stuff literally because you don't have. Well, <laughs> uh, you need a you need a blue filter for some of this stuff. Uh, some TVs have it built in, like my LG here. My LG has a blue filter turn uh, built in, so I don't need I don't need to put a pair of glasses on. I don't need that 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 goofy little piece of uh, plastic blue film to hold over my eyes. But uh, like for this one here. Yeah, you're gonna have to <laughs> you're gonna have to have that capability. But uh, th these guys will tell you all about it. All that I'm trying to uh, get to here is uh, ha basic settings. You're gonna want your room as black as you can get it. I mean, you don't want any light coming in, and I can't block at all because it's daylight out there when I'm trying to make this video. But uh, basically, what you want. You, you want this to be pure black. This is your, your reference black. It's pure black. You want to see 17 flashing ever so slightly. And you don't want to see nothing out of that. There is flashing going on up in here. I'm sure you can see it. I hope you can see it. Can you see it? Hmm. I can't see it on the screen. Yeah, okay. You can just barely see it. Um, I'll tell you what. I am going to put up a, uh, yeah, I got to block this room out. That's what we're going to do. I got a pretty damn pitch black in here. Uh, there is some strange blooming that that I'm seeing. And now that it is pitch black, I can see that uh, with my naked eye as well. But uh, for some of this future stuff, I mean, not, not for this because it's not that critical. But... Uh, some of the future stuff that we're about to get into, uh, you're going to want to uh, turn off your local dimming if if you have that option. LGs have that option. A few other brands have the option. Uh, Samsung, yeah, good freaking luck. <laughs> you still need to do it, but uh, you got to. Uh, you you kind of got to go into the service menu to get it done. But uh, anywho, that's the. Uh, this is where you're going to set your your black level. Moving along here. Okay. Naturally here, you're going to set your white level. And again, I mean, just like black, you want everything to flash right up into white. Right up into white. This camera probably won't see it. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's right there. It is right there. That one ain't flashing, but 234. Yeah, you can you can just see it. I can see it. But uh, what you would do is uh, for all of this stuff, pretty much a, 
the same for all LGs now. They have a, they all have the same basic menu. Uh, going to uh, all settings and go into uh, your picture settings here and you can adjust your black light which is going to give you brightness I mean actual physical brightness like bright sun you know cloudy day dark night <laughs> um, that is not going to do anything for uh, the color white or the color black it's just literally going to control the brightness of your uh, screen how bright it is uh, your contrast that's that's going to be your white level that's what you're going to be looking at here if you want to adjust white and uh, well, just to show you here real quick if I yeah I think you can see those those flashing oops wait a minute I moved way too much let's do that yeah it looks like shit huh just a little bit <laughs> yeah that's that's one extreme and up there there's another extreme this is doing really good on white I am surprised normally you would lose at least uh, three or four bars there well most of what you can see but it's not doing it so uh, hey it's a good TV like I said in my review, it, it really is a, a, a good TV. I am very happy with it. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what you're going to adjust. You're going to adjust your brightness and your contrast. And uh, that's about all you're going to get out of uh, this DVD, this disc. Uh, towards the end, it'll, it'll show you some colors like this. This is where you would need a filter. You're going to need a blue filter, which LG does have. It's 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 built in to most of their stuff, their modern stuff anyway. But uh, for for the most part, all you're going to get out of this is your brightness and your contrast. So uh, you know, you, you you watch the video. It, it's all self-explanatory. I mean, they literally spell it out for you. I'm sorry, it's not self-explanatory. Just watch the video, and they will spell it out for you. Just you know, follow along as best you can, and you know. And in, in 25, 30 minutes, you're done. You, you don't got to spend a lot of time on this one. And then you're going to have, you know, as decent whites as your eyeballs can get you. And you're going to have as decent blacks as your eyeball can get you. And uh, you didn't spend nothing but a little bit of time. So uh, this, is a, this is a good way to go. All right, just real quick here. I thought I'd run you through uh, what I'm doing. See, I have it. This. Whew. It's a little scary. <laughs> you gotta hold it. Uh, these these weak little mini. Uh, is it a mini or is it a micro HDMI? Uh, it's something like that. But I got a tab out. I got a you know that connection. Uh, just thought I'd run you real quick through. Uh, just to prove it. You know because it does work. The uh, the app that I'm about to show you. Hmm. Can I find it? Right in front of my face. All right. Uh, I mean, it's just duplicating, more or less. I don't dick around with the setup. It'll talk to you. It, it, it'll walk you through, you know, give you a half-ass uh, tutorial. I just go to Tools, and I go to Picture Adjustment, and we get right in. I had a really hard time uh, trying to show this to you. I was having all kinds of... Uh, yeah, connection issues. I, uh, <laughs> eh, I'm uh, hardwired. I'm physically uh, with a, I think a mini. What is it? A mini or a micro H HDMI to full size. I'm I'm directly connected to the television, and I'm charging my tablet at the same time. So, uh, kind of a twofer. Anywho, I want to show you this uh, this THX app here real quick. It does work. It works, well, it works great. <laughs> All those people that are, you know, I don't know, giving it one, two star reviews. Well, I'm sorry, but fuck them. <laughs> I, there, I don't think there's a nice way to say it. Look, the, the thing is free. They didn't pay a dime for it. They're complaining because it doesn't connect wirelessly. Well, boo fucking who? 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's not the, the programmer's fault that you don't have the correct hardware. Yeah, I've got a physical connection here, so I'm able to make it work. And I understand if you don't have the connection, kind of a bummer, right? But what do you want for literally nothing? It's free. It's freaking free. So uh, all you guys out there doing the one star and the two star shit, well, hey, whatever. But you know where I stand on that. So uh, anywho, this uh, this is very intuitive. It it it, it kind of walks you through everything. You can get the click the get started there and, and go that route. What I do, I skip all that crap because well, hey, I've been here, I've done that. I click the tool thing, it's a little tool icon, and I go to picture adjustments. And there you go. It's duplicating. You know, this is just like screen size. It, it walks you through a couple of basic things here. Um, there's your contrast, your brightness, your darkness, you know, that kind of a thing. It's just duplicating the screen. And again, you know, whites and blacks. It's, it's, it's doing basically the same thing that you would have done or that you probably already did in the uh, first demonstration that I gave you. And two, I just thought I'd mention here real quick. Uh, if you click this icon, you get a, a whatever, a uh, written instruction list. Um, you know, step one, step two, step three, kind of a thing. It tells you what to do, what to look for, and, you know, basically how to make your adjustments. But uh, it also uh, talks to you. I don't have this plugged into my receiver, so you're not going to hear sound. And I would have to change a bunch of settings in my television to get sound out of that to make this audible. So I'm not going to do that, but trust me, it, it works. It works freaking awesome. Now, this is where you would use a camera. This is where you the, you would you push a ca camera button. You would line up. Oh, let's see if it works. I don't know. Um, yeah, there you go. You can see what I see. Yeah. What you would do here, I mean, you read the instructions is what you would do, but you can adjust your, your colors, your tint, you know, it, it run you through like red, green, blue, that kind of, that kind of thing. Yellow, so forth and so on. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's how it works. That's what it does. And, and I'm proving it to you guys. <laughs> We're all, Oh, you bastards. I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, if you don't have the connection, stop giving this thing a one-star rating because it's freaking awesome. It just does what you ask it to do, and it does so much more than you should have the right to expect for free. For fucking free. So, you know, cut these guys a break for fuck's sake. Um, it does other things. Mm, like, here, if you click on the THX... Uh, you know, should play trailers. There you go. Not quite good quality, but it's streaming. You did have, I don't know if you saw it. Um, here, let me back that up. You do have the option to download it eh, right there. You could download it and maybe you get higher quality that way, but you, you get a handful of, uh, you know options to run through i love this one this this where the world is the here i just i love this one the world blows up here that's a hell of a boom and then there's that 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 low sweeping kind of a, a rumble in your in your subwoofer oh <laughs> yes sir and need some more of that. No, I just I love that power. That's meh. When when you got a decent system, it's it's that's that's a fun one. Anywho, you get the basic idea here. It'll do uh it'll do sound that you can you can basically tune your receiver with it. I don't personally and I nor would I actually recommend using this, but it is damn fun to play with. And uh hey, it's free. Come on now. Uh, if you got a TV that's really, you know, cattywampus, totally out of whack, this will probably help you a lot. If you don't trust your eyes, well, this will help you a lot in that regard as well. But mm, you got eyes, you got ears. If they're both working halfway decent, you're probably going to want to use the method before this 
or and or the method after this but i recommend you try them all because you know something's going to work better for you than than well something before something later you got to figure this out for yourself i'm i can only open the door it's up to you to walk through it so now we're moving along here getting ready to uh, do the hardware and software bit with the uh, colorimeter i uh, just thought i'd quickly run you through the well, the basic setup here. Um, my TV is wall mounted. It is uh, extended on trailing arms and it is tilted. So that uh, that method there, eh, I can't do that. There's no way in hell that's going to work for me. So I do have a unique tripod, which is this thing right here. I had to move some stuff to get it set up but I mean whatever I'll, I'll put a link in the description you can you can kind of see what uh, yeah kind of see what it, what it's doing though um, I have the camera mounted to that naturally and then I'm going to slowly but surely you know scoot it in move it inwards and I'll use a piece of paper literally printer paper as a feeler gauge so that I know when it's right up against the screen but not applying any real pressure when when I'm a piece of paper thickness distance from physically touching the screen, I will lock everything in because this thing is infinitely adjustable. Love it. And too, I got a ball head up there. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll lock it in and then we'll start taking measurements. But uh, I just thought I'd show you my setup. Your, yours is probably going to be different. This is basically all I'm doing. I've got it uh, right up against and I'm just using... Just a piece of printer paper here. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that. Probably not. It's got a slight drag on it, but uh, you just kind of ever so gently. See, like there, I, I just moved it, moved it in. I can't, I can't go through. I can't go through. And can't go through and can't go through. So that means I'm, I'm, I'm contacted on all four points of this. Um, camera here I'm right up against I just I I want to just barely feather touch just uh, with the, uh, the kiss of a whisper you know what I mean you just barely barely want it there um, yeah <laughs> you almost want no no pressure because these screens eh, I don't want to do it but you you've seen I'm, I'm sure you've seen you push on them and then you get this kind of little rainbow effect thing going on that's the way LCDs are I mean they, they've always been this way they're always probably going to be this way because of the multi-layer thing that comprises a uh, liquid crystal display. But you don't want to have any pressure on because you're going to get that rainbow thing. And well, this thing's trying to read color. You don't want any kind of distortion in that regard. So uh, that's that's this is the way I do it. I highly recommend it because, well, I ain't found a better way of doing it. But uh, use, a, use a piece of paper, you know, and get it, get it to where you just can go through there, but with the slightest amount of drag. And yeah, you're pretty pretty much done right there then. Call her a day and uh, move on to the next step. Overkill, I'm sure, but I, I just want you to hear this. If, uh, hopefully. See what I mean? And I've got it. I've got it every which way, every single direction. I mean, it's it's literally right there. It, it can't get no close. Well, you can, you can get closer and get less than paper thickness. But uh, once you achieve that, then uh, you're as close as you need to be. And you're not going to have any uh, weird distortions in color. And uh, you're ready to rock and roll. All right, the next step here is once you got your uh, colorimeter, set oh so perfectly and, and do do spend the time on that it, it does matter it's important um but once you're there once you got it now uh now you're ready to rock and roll with a program that uses that particular piece of hardware and we're talking about display cal in this case um when you first open the program you're going to see something that looks just like that it's really simple uh your display pick and choose what do you want to use here you're going to use your primary display 
always whatever whatever you're using if it's samsung it'll, it'll say so if it's sony it'll say so um you know it's pretty much going to do all that for you if it doesn't click the refresh button and it will just re-detect re everything that's that's plugged in and you know hey if it didn't catch it the first time it'll get it the second time now uh they want you to have your uh, display on already for about half an hour 30 minutes because well things change with heat i mean literally everything changes with heat it either expands or contracts with the the more or less heat and or uh like in the case of leds the hotter they get the less color i think yeah is it the, yeah that's a good question i don't know uh more or less color they produce <laughs> yeah so uh you know heat matters but uh Get, get the thing up to operating temperature, up to normal operating temperature. For me, it's it's awesome because my thing, hell, I never turn it off. My thing's been, my TV here has been running for literally thousands of hours. <laughs> I never shut the thing off. Um, I'm using that LG Nano 90. I'm, I don't know if anybody knew that or not, but that's my television here. LG, 65 inch LG Nano 90. But, uh, anywho, um, if you can't wait 30 minutes then you're going to want to probably click this white level drift compensation um if yours has been on for you know ever and ever like mine has you might want to click the black level drift compensation it's just going to uh, pretty much take a break every so often while it's while it's flashing colors and, and taking readings it's going to give you know black just black basically turn everything off for for just just a couple of seconds let everything cool down and then it'll continue on with the test and it'll do this intermittently uh, I don't use it but uh, you could if you wanted to and that would be the reason why you would use it in case well like uh, let's say you don't have air conditioning let's say you don't have normal room temperature um, if you can't hold you know a normal 70 degrees and have this thing consistent you know if you're if, if you got a really hot room on the day that you're trying to do this you might yeah maybe maybe you want to use this um again if you got a really cold room on the day that you're trying to do this mm, maybe maybe not uh, but there is a use case scenario i don't use it and for the for the most part you probably won't either but um if uh if you're dealing with extremes well this is kind of one way to deal with it uh, your uh, instrument here naturally is the uh, i1 display pro for me um, but you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have options here depending on your colorimeter. It, it'll show up there. Your mode for uh, well, you only got two options here. You got the refresh type, which is typically for CRT screens. But uh, we're gonna get there. We're we're gonna talk about that a little later in the in the advanced section. For right now, we're just doing LCD generic. Everything is pretty much out of the box. This is the way it's gonna work uh, for you. And I'm just going to walk you through it. It's it's in this case it's real dirt simple. There's nothing to do here aside from you know, hey, choose something, choose nothing. But uh, it's not going to really make any real difference for you. This might, however, the uh, color correction file, if yours has one, yeah, you, know, you can choose for your television here, and or if I know I know the camera's in the way blocking a couple of things if you can't find it there you can also search online you know check online and for me there there is no corrections available for my particular setup here uh for you there might be so you know give it a shot if there is use it if there isn't leave it to auto which is none um and you're you're good here on this page that's uh that's all you need to know there the uh next thing i would do I mean, just so you can get a good apples to apples, I would come here to the ver verification and just run a test, just to get a good idea of where you at, where you are at currently. What what is your screen doing? What is it doing? Um, you won't have a before and after unless you do this. So uh, yeah, I, I recommend you do this. Uh, it, it's it's simple. You, I choose the extended verification chart specifically for video because hey, that's what screens are all about for me. It's all about video. If you're doing pictures, well, hey, you've got options. You got a shit ton of options. Um, HDR is something that I'm not going to cover for a while. We're, we're we're doing we're doing basic, and then we're going to do advanced. But we're not going to do uh, anything high dyna high dynamic range 
until much later on. Honestly, because I'm still, well, I'm still, I'm, I'm still learning all that myself. So I'm not going to tell you something unless I know it to be true. But uh, what I use, I just use the extended verification test chart because, well, it's more than the standard. Uh, uh, yeah, did I say that right? Extended. Yeah, standard. Extended. Um, yeah. Does it matter? I don't know. Maybe, maybe a little. <laughs> it doesn't take long. It takes about two minutes to, uh, you know, run this test. And then once you get there, you're going to see something that looks like that. Uh, again, you know, it's uh, loaded with information, but it'll, it'll give you brightness, uh, give you a contrast ratio. It'll, it'll, it'll say, you know, well, it'll tell you what it read. It'll show you where your colors are on, where your colors are off. Um, my white point here, my assumed target, is, is actually pretty good. Right down in there, yeah, I think you can see that. But uh, when we start getting into grays, oh, I got a problem. I got a big problem. Uh, that is way wrong. Green is good. Um, you yeah, know, well, gray. But uh, gray not measured. Um, green is good. Yellow is, you know, caution. And red is, hey, you got a big old problem. And we'll see. These are these are the actual colors. Uh, which side is it? You know what? I forgot. Uh, yeah, I think this is the actual color it should be. This is the color that was measured. Yeah, the color that was red. The color that, that my color rimeter actually saw. You know, it's supposed to be that color, but it actually looked like that. And you, you can clearly see all this red over here. I got, I got, uh, I got issues. So, uh, you know, and the only way you're going to get this information is if you run the pretest, which is, you know, that's how you do it. But uh, scrolling down here through here, it, it tells you all the colors I got right and all the colors that I have wrong. Here's my color temperature. Actually, color temperature is pretty good. Not too bad at all. Everything should be right on the 6K mark. Everything, you know, this, this circle should be inside of that. That circle should be inside of this, so forth and so on. You know, that's a good one. That's a good one. And, uh, you know, decent, but, you know, that's bad. This is way bad. Um, yeah color temperature is when you start getting different percentages of gray you know and and right here below uh, 25 percent mm, well below 20 percent it really starts to turn to crap but uh, you know that now you're you're getting real close to that pitch black too and two also so keep that in mind you know that the, the lesser the percentage the the less light period and you know the more black everything becomes and but it's all measured in gray literally white is measured in gray um, gamma, this is a big one. This is really, you know, probably your most important thing. I'm, I want a gamma 2.2. You may or may not, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, you know, why you may choose one over the other, but, uh, you, you've got options. I'm trying to get a, a gamma 2.2 and man, it's just all over the map. I mean, I'm not right anywhere across the spectrum. So, uh, gamma is your mid range color. And that's the bulk of what you see. Your reds, your greens, your blue. The bulk of what you literally see with your eyeballs is all measured in gamma. It's it's right in the middle range. You got your, your top end, which is your highlights, and you got your bottom end, which is your shadow. But, uh, you know, you got your whites and blacks, and then you got your gamma. Gamma is in the middle, and it's it's where you're going to get the, the, the most benefit out of any adjustment that you might make. Uh, in color, that is. In color. So, uh, yeah. And this is uh, how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> everything should be on this zero line it should be running you know right parallel and clearly we are way out of spec here way out reds are, are off the map blues greens you know you name it uh, every every color i got <laughs> about from 50 percent on down is freaking horrible so that means all my shadows all my uh lower end detail stuff i mean the colors just ain't nowhere near correct so we got big problems there and you're going to measure this stuff the same way I'm doing it. You're going to see probably a similar uh, result. You know, uh, keep in mind, my TV has four, uh, well, over 4,000 hours of runtime on it. Like I said, I never shut it off. So mm, yours is probably going to do a little better than mine. But uh, just to show you, you know, bad versus, you know, how good it can get. Uh, you got to do a before and after. And uh, again, you know, these circles should be all inside of one another. And, uh, yeah, well, I mean, you get the idea there. You can, you can zoom in, you can move it around and 
<laughs> you can play with it. So, uh, yeah, I, I recommend you try that, do that, you know, and then get back to the uh, calibration. Uh, on this first tab here, we're done. We, 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 we talked about that. We set that up. Go to calibration here. You're going to choose your color, your color temperature. Uh, well, I always use 65 because, well, that's, that's, that's standard. Everybody out there is pretty much going to use 65. And this is, happens to be default uh, settings, so you probably won't have to change anything there. Uh, you're going to want the interactive display adjustment uh, enabled because of uh, manual adjustments that you will make to the television. Or, if you're like me, you can update a calibration file that you already have. Now, I, I disabled mine. I turned mine off just so I could show you how bad colors can get. My TV is not this bad. <laughs> Nowhere in here. But I, it is if I have that, uh, if I disable my color profile, it, it, it is this bad then um, with my current settings. So, uh, I just tried to show you, you know, bad and then we're going to we're going to get into good. Your white point, like I said, it's, you're probably just going to leave it there at 65. I don't see no reason why you would want anything different. Uh, that's going to tell white, you know, what white is. This is this is the color temperature that we're looking for, 65K. And you that's where you're really want, going to want to be. Uh, your uh, white white level here, you can leave it as measured or you can click custom. Now this is where you're going to set your brightness. Uh, if you got a specific brightness that you're after, normally 120. 120 is the industry standard for, oh, I don't know, professional calibrated, you know, professional workstations. Guys that literally just do photo editing and video editing, they're 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 probably in a in a a, a properly lit room under very you know specific conditions, and their monitor therefore then too is also at a very specific brightness level. That's what you're going to control here by candelas per meter squared. Um, I do oh, for you, and, and I'm telling you for me, um, it's been my my experience. This is just going to do more harm than good. I I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything here unless you got a reason to do it. I I would just leave it uh, as measured because. You're going to control that with backlighting, not brightness, not contrast, your backlight. And that's going to be something that you have to figure out for yourself. What What is good for your environment? Are you always in a sunny environment? Okay, well, you probably want a brighter screen than, than me, for example, that is normally in a dark environment. I don't want my eyes freaking burned out of my skull. So I, I don't want all that brightness. But I need enough to see. I need, I need enough to see the details and the shadows and the highlights and, the, and well, the shadows. But, uh, you know, that is something you just got to figure out for yourself. But I would say for 90, at least 90% of you guys out there, gals, guys, whoever's doing this stuff, for at least 90% of you, just leave it alone. Leave it as measured. But, uh, you know, that's why you would change it if you had a specific use case. You know, if you were trying to match the uh, output of one display um, to another, if you're trying to match two displays, that would be another, another reason to possibly use it. Uh, this is the only way you're going to get the uh, duplicate the uh, actual brightness of, of both, get them even. Um, so, I mean, like I said, there are specific use cases, but for the most part, if you're doing one screen, nah, leave it alone. Leave it as measured. Uh, your gamma. You've got options here. For the most part, again, you're either going to do gamma 2.2 or you're going to do rec 709. Uh, for me, I, I, again, my use case scenario here, very specific because I'm I'm driving this screen with a computer, and the computer should be running at a gamma 2.2, which also is almost exactly the same as Rec 709. That's that's just the way it ends up. That's the way it is. Rec 709 is a video standard. Gamma 2.2 here in this case is a PC standard. So, yeah, you know, I, try them both. I mean, seriously, try them both because. Uh, it's the only way you're going to know. You might end up with blacks being too black at gamma 2.2. You might. And there is a way you, you can you can customize here. Uh, if you want to uh, say gamma 2.0, uh, uh, you'd have to manually type it. But you can go from 2.0, you know, 1.8 all the way to 2.4. Uh, the higher you go, the lighter your blacks are going to be. Uh, the, the, the lower you go in number, numerical value, the darker the blacks are going to be. You can make it uh, relative or absolute, which is, you know, absolute is going to create like a linear curve. 
a row. Well, yeah, it's not a curve. It's going to be a linear line. Absolute. Um, but you're going to miss certain colors along the, along that line. Some colors just simply won't get there. They won't be able to hit the number. But if you leave it as relative, well, the program will, will, will do a lot in that regard to help you out. It, it will it'll bend the curve, literally, to make things come into alignment. But uh, that is only going to work specifically if you're using a computer, uh, which, okay, let me let me explain that a little better. If you're going to run your screen with a computer and you're going to create a, a color profile, that's going to work beautifully for you. If you're just using a computer to calibrate a, a screen and then you're going to unplug the computer to watch, you know, say, for example, you're going to plug a Blu-ray into it. I, this ain't going to mean shit for you then. It just, you know, it ain't going to matter. Uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, well, that's, that's how it breaks down. But uh, I, for, for this, for, you know, as now, you can leave everything as measured or you can pick and choose. Uh, you're definitely going to want the uh, uh, 65K. Uh, you're, if you're using a computer, like I said, if you're going to run the screen with a computer, you're going to want Gamma 2.2 and uh, Calibration Speed. I don't know. Pick your poison. Uh, very high is you know going to take about four minutes according to uh, the estimation on there. You're going to slow it down, you know, and make it stand, you know, spend a lot of time staring at a, a, a color. And it's going to take a whole lot longer. Me personally, I don't know. I haven't seen any noticeable difference. Um, you know, I, I guess I spend 30 minutes or I spend four to six minutes. Eh, I'm getting the same end results. So you play around with that. You, 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 you see what works for you. But uh, this is what works for me. This has been my experience. So uh, I would recommend you just go with these settings here. For the most part, unless, like I said, you have a specific use case scenario, then uh, you're going to have to do something a little different. You're going to have to do something specific for your setup. Here, you can just name it. I, you know, I've, I've done this before, so I've been here. I've done that. Um, test charts. Uh, I use these, use these uh, auto-optimized. That's, that's what I do because, well, the... the the program knows what it needs to uh, more or less as you're going through it. It, it, it will it will decide what it needs for uh, you know proper calibration. Sometimes it'll pick a big number, sometimes it'll pick a small number, but you can always increase or decrease the amount of uh, images that it's going to sample. Uh, I find somewhere in the 500 range is you know is really good. Uh, I I've never had trouble, honestly. <laughs> Even down here, you know, at 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 the, at the eighty, you know, if you're if you're only sampling eighty pictures, I can't tell you that I can see the difference. I know that there is a difference in the amount of pictures that it shows and in the color of the pictures that it shows. It will if the higher you go, the more gradients it's going to run through. So I find that you know five hundred and anywhere five six hundred somewhere in that ballpark is is probably about as good as you're ever going to have to go. But the, the, the more pictures it samples, the longer it's going to take. As you can clearly see, the estimated uh, runtime measurement time here is now 13 minutes. And, uh, yeah, I mean, pick, pick your poison there. But uh, I would leave it at auto-optimized because it's very good at doing that. It, it knows basically what it needs. But uh, I give her a little more just because I always think I know better. You know how that game is played. <laughs> you know better too, right? Um, so give her what you want. But uh, just keep in mind, the more more pictures you sample, the longer it's going to take. Um, and here, like I said, you know, name it whatever you want. Then all you do is you click Calibrate and Profile. Yeah, I'm going to have to name that something else. How about that? Yeah, I don't have a one, so... Uh, then you're going to come to a window that looks, well, like that. It has a uh, little crosshatch in the middle. You can you can make it smaller with the plus, uh, minus sign, and you can make it bigger with the, the plus sign. Um, because I, I am, you know, you, you saw the way I, I'm doing here with tripods. I, I need you kind of in the center so I can talk and you can see, and my camera's a little off to the side, so it's a little cattywampus, but uh, you get the idea. Um, 
what you can do you can click this box down here to black out the entire background now that's that's awesome and i and i really uh like that feature but you're gonna need a second screen to make that work in other words uh, well here I'm gonna tell you real quick uh, if, if you click that and then you do the you begin the measurement process what's gonna happen it will do exactly what it suggests <laughs> it's gonna black out the entire back background like my, my desktop color here is like this uh, kind of pewter gray color it won't be it'll be pitch black if you if you check that box but what it also then does is it blocks up the next window that's about to pop up and you won't be able to see that that's why you're gonna need a second display if you choose to use that option otherwise do like I and uh, yeah just make make a really big test window I'm taking up uh, well I am I, I'm not doing a measurement here but uh, I'm gonna call that two-thirds of the freaking screen I've taken it up with this whole test window here so just make your window large enough. And the, the reason what that you would want to do that is for, uh, uh, here, let me show you. You're going to have to manually adjust your TV. And when you do that, well, you're going to create some light over here. This light, well, can interfere with uh, your, 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 your uh, colorimeter. Uh, my... Uh, what was that? that that sony that q90r that i had that thing was horrible about doing it i had i had what i would have to do is i'd have to uh you know get get to where i wanted to go uh well <laughs> see how it just got a lot brighter that light would flood so badly so badly while i'm trying to do a measurement while i'm trying to make an adjustment every time i had to back up into the menu it would get really bright the camera would start lying to me it, because it would be reading bleed through on that screen and then once I was actually able to make the adjustment, I, I could get it down to uh, something smaller. Let me uh, let me just show you here real quick, just so you know, so you don't have to guess. I'll just show you. If I wanted to do backlight, I click on it. See, like down in here now. Now I got something smaller to work with. Well, actually, it's pretty large on this television, but. Uh, on, on the uh, Samsung that Q90R man every little thing I would do it, it created this this half half of the, the, the screen would get you know really bright with this secondary menu system and it would would totally mess with the camera reading so uh, just something to keep in mind um, you, you're always gonna have that problem there, there, there's no getting away from it so just make sure your camera is positioned in such a way that uh, you know it's not going to be messed with or interfere with otherwise because well otherwise you're gonna have a problem you're not gonna get accurate readings or results but uh, for uh, for the dual if you want to you know eliminate some of the hassle here a dual display setup is really nice but uh, you're still gonna have to do this you're, you, once once I click uh, start measurement um, you're gonna see and since I am already here um, how about I do that I'm gonna say start measuring oh and I put that cursor right under that camera what an asshole hmm. anyway you're gonna see a window just like that and this is where you're gonna tell the TV what color is white and you can adjust your brightness to a well if you chose a specific brightness level this is where you're gonna set it uh, you're not gonna set it with software you're gonna set it with your, your actual black back light right here is is what would control you know brightness uh but uh what we're gonna do i'm gonna get there so that uh yeah when i click start measurement we're already there um here go into advanced control on an lg and then set your white balance you're also going to want to make sure that uh, all your all your well i i'm not going through it here because i've already you know pretty much run through this before but for you you're going to want to turn pretty much all this automatic crap off yeah you, know, you, you don't want the the tv doing anything automatically for you especially your uh, um um oh yeah your your, your dynamic uh, backlighting yeah you're not going to want any of that turned on 
You, you just want the picture. You want a static picture as it is, as it should be, out of the box, and let the LED color shine through. I mean, what is the thing truly capable of? No processing. Turn as much of that stuff off as humanly possible, and then you can get on with the uh, actual white balance. For me, it's called white balance. For you, it might be called something else, but uh, uh, I'm only doing the two-point. I'm only going to focus on the two-point white balance method. You can get a whole lot more involved. Oh, you can really... You, yeah, this is a rabbit hole, and it it, uh, yeah, it keeps going. Um, but uh, point of diminishing returns, right? Yeah, this is this is going to take you know, this is going to take enough of your time already and <laughs> enough of your money. Uh, there's there's really no need to uh, go further. Like I can do a ten point, I can do a twenty two point white balance. It's uh, it's not something you're really going to want to get into, I'm sure. But uh, for me. I'm just doing the two point and what we're going to do here, we're going to set because I, uh, because if you leave this program on, on it's automatic, it's only going to give you one option. You, you're not going to be able to do the low end. You're only going to be able to do the high end to set your uh, white balance, you know, from about the middle range, mid range on up. So in this case, for me, I got to, I got to choose high and then I, you know, literally will uh, dial it in by color and just to, Give you a, a quick demo of what that looks like here it's going to run through a couple of colors here it's going to take some readings and bam right according to this my uh I, I got too much green too much red and not enough blue you want everything right in line right in between these uh these two check marks here that's what you want um, currently I'm measuring a Delta E of 2.3 and that's technically perceivable. Uh, I can't see it honestly, but, uh, <laughs> you probably can't see it either, but it's technically the human eye can see anything, you know, above one. So as long as you can get this well under, you know, one, which is pretty easy to do. Um, yeah, yeah, you just can't see it anyway. Um, this is how you would do it. Say, you know, red. Uh, I've got too much red. So I back it down. I back it down. Keep backing it down. Bam. Now, now I went too far. I would take that back one and choose another color. Let's try blue. Let's bring blue up. Hello. Let's bring blue up. Oh, I know what I did. I keep pushing the uh, arrow key. Bring in blue up. Affecting one color will affect the other two. So you want to move slowly in stages, increments. Ideally, and I'm just going to give you a little heads up here, something I've learned uh, literally the hard way. You uh, you probably want to leave green alone. Green will affect your brightness. I, I don't know exactly why. I just know that it does. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's going to mess with, uh, well, it's going to mess with a whole bunch of things in one shot. If you can just focus on uh, red and blue, yeah, do that. See, my green is currently at zero. I have not adjusted my green because, well, I, I, I've been there. I've done that. I, I, I know, you know, I know what that's all about. And there I am, you know, already at uh, everything turns green here once you're uh, w well within spec and the spec is less than one. Stop right there. And for the for the most part, if you're not doing this with a computer, if you're not using a computer and you're going to create a profile to install into a computer, an ICC profile, then literally you're done. This is it. You're done. Walk away. <laughs> Success story. <laughs> there is nothing more to it than that. You just got to tell the TV what color white is, get your brightness, your contrast, and there you go. But if you are like me and you run the thing with a computer, well, there's other steps and stages involved here. But for the most part, this is it. You're done. And it, even with a computer, you are already 90% of the way done. You're already done. 
it's going to already look so much better. You know, the, the more perfect you can get this, which, you know, I can mess with it, but, uh, I'm, I'm all, I know where my settings were to get this about where I want it. So, uh, I'm just trying to walk through it here to show you guys basically what you're in store for. And, uh, yeah, most of you, 90% of you done. But for the, the rest of you that are running, you know, you want to install an ICC profile. Well, you got to go to the next stage and that's where it, it will just do it automatically for you. So, uh, I'm going to exit out of this. And just real quick and dirty, show you what that's all about. Say stop measurement. Uh, you can check your weight level here, but there's nothing that you can adjust unless you are specifically, like I said, if, if, if you have a specific number that you're looking for, you can check it here. Um, and this is just going to run you through this shadow, this black point. We did not measure that, and that's because of, well, we're, we're, we're doing it, you know, out of the box. We're doing it, you know, quick and easy, dirt simple. Um, I don't know how to, I don't know how to make it any easier because this is what the program is, this is what it does. Um, I don't want to get too involved in, you know, well, too much here for the, for the beginner section. But uh, remember when I showed you my uh, test chart? And it was so, I was, I was having real problems, you know, down in the 20% range of, uh, my, my gamma there. I mean, it was horrible. I actually, I think gamma was below anything below 50% and it was way off, but I got a Delta E of, uh, nine, 9.4. Yeah. It's horrible in the shadow zone. I can't adjust shadow on this setting. So I'm going to get into that with the, uh, the, the, the advanced section that I'm getting into later because we're going to cover some more things and, you know go from there but uh anyway you saw i think I, I hope i explained everything well enough for everybody to understand this is this is just the beginner stuff and it, and it's really easy to do all you got to do is click next and let it go now like i said what it's going to do is just flash a whole bunch of colors and it's going to create an icc profile and uh, i'm not going to finish this off i just wanted you to see uh basically how it goes at the end of this it's going to ask you if you want to install you know what I, I will let this run just so I can show that to you yeah I'm going to let it run just you know just to be thorough here because uh, I'm, I'm trying to do for you what I wish somebody had done for me when I was trying to learn all this crap without rambling too awfully much but uh, hey this is this is an involved topic and it just takes what it takes to get through it so uh, all right I'm going to let this run We'll come back when it's finished, and yeah. Alrighty, guys, this thing has finished up here, and uh, once it's done doing what it does, you're gonna end on, well, this screen. It's gonna look just like that. Um, just a quick glance here, where it's saying uh, profile self check here, Delta E seventy six, uh, the average. And uh, maximum, and I, you know what, I RMS is normally root means squared. Uh, I'm not sure if that holds true in this regard. Hmm. Okay, that's a question mark for me. Don't believe anything I tell you there, but uh, believe what it tells you. It's 0.37. Uh, what we need, ha, huh? just for uh, quick and dirty. I never closed that page, so uh, Delta 76. <laughs> this is our before, you know, before I did any kind of calibration, before anything. Our average was uh, 4.64 right here. Yeah, can you? Hopefully, you can see this on camera. 4.64 there. Um, our average is now 0 0.31. Damn fine, if you ask me, son. <laughs> Damn fine. Uh, our maximum here is com came down to 1.23. Uh, Delta E and our maximum here right there used to be 12.34 so that is a world of difference huge huge now um, the only way to really know for sure is what we're gonna do here real quick I'm going to install the profile yep profile has been installed and activated now uh, 
Verify it. That's it. Run a test. Uh, two minutes. Extended verification. Mm. X709. Give it 2.2. Yeah. No. I don't have an option for 2.2 there. So, like I said, Rec 709 or 2.2, you know, it's pretty much the same damn thing. Uh, one is, you know, primarily for uh, video. The other is for computer, but it's, it's all right there. Um, so, uh, yeah, click uh, go, and uh, I'm just going to call it. Yeah. One. And save. Quickly do that. I have a tool that I got running in the background. It's 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 a super simple tool. It allows you to oh so effortlessly and quickly switch between color profiles. I'm going to give you a link to that thing because it has been a godsend for me. Um, no, I'm, I'm going to get into that later, and that's going to be a part of the advanced thing. But uh, this, we're just sticking to the basics here. And I know it's taken a while. It's, it's well, I told you in the beginning, this is involved. Um, so, uh, all right, I'm going to bring you back here once this, uh, once this is finished up here. Okay, here we are. Um... Well, I mean, there's that, and there's that. Well, let's try and go through it. Most of this isn't going to mean much to anybody. So uh, let's just start with colors, because, well, we all like colors, right? <laughs> this is the after, obviously, clearly. Um, everything is now, you know, okay, okay, okay. Before, <laughs> very much not okay. Uh, it was, you know, way the hell out like yours is, like most of them will be. And to keep in mind, please, the more runtime you put on a screen, the more out of whack it will become. Eventually, it will become to the point, or we'll get to the point where you just simply cannot get a color correct. It just won't get there. Well, I mean, everything wears out. The human body wears out. Uh, grass wears out. You know, trees wear out. Everything dies over time. It's just a matter of when. So, uh, it is what it is. Um, the more runtime you put on a thing, well, the worse it's going to perform over time. But uh, I don't make this up, folks. You clearly see it. And this was retested, remeasured. So, uh, very freaking good. <laughs> very good. Uh, this is where it was. Everything in red, naturally. You know, bad, danger, stop, stop. Green is good. Red, bad. Yellow is caution. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, looking at that, looking uh, pretty damn okay. Now, again, keep in mind, please, uh, this is, this is I'm using a computer to run this display. So I've just installed a, a, a color profile into my uh, graphics card. Well, it's not into the graphics card. It's in the Windows operating system, but it's a color profile that the graphics card will read to display this picture. This is the before. This is the after. Yeah, this is nice. This is man, it's good. That's <laughs> damn good. We hit ninety-five percent. You saw it. Ninety-five percent of the RGB color space. I mean, that's as good as some of the 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 best. Well, not. Uh, let me correct myself here. That's as good as some of the really really good um, displays out there on the market. They're only doing ninety-five to ninety-eight percent. My TV's doing it. <laughs> I just showed it to you. Um, Let's see uh, before. Everything, every circle should be in a circle. They should all be right there in a circle. Circles in a circle. And here, well, <laughs> it's still a little off, a little off on the bottom end here. Uh, down here at the 5% mark. 10% mark, you know. 10% is pretty close, but uh, 5%, you know, eh, it's a little little worse, a little, little further off. But uh, hey, hey, <laughs> you saw where it was. That's where it was. I mean, hell, we weren't good, you know, much, uh, yeah, 
much below 40 40 45% yeah right here is you know on up is is yeah it's probably all right and this is this is uh, our our uh, color temperature cuz we're shooting for 65k and it's 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 just the color to go for it's it's pretty much industry standard everything pretty much runs there it's what you want um now now I'm right here <laughs> I don't hope you can't hear him but my cat he's out there he's he's getting all cranked up he's uh he's kind of yelling in the wind um a gamma this is the important one this is super critical this is where the bulk of your color rendition happens this is what you're really going to see when you say something has good colors or bad colors this is where you're going to see it it's right here in the gamma and i want a gamma of 2.2 and it's uh pretty close after the fact i can get it a little better things can be tweaked but uh where it was before <laughs> holy christ again it should be a circle in a circle I mean, it was all over the map and way, all, well, way out of range, way out of spec. It was, uh, well, pretty, pretty damn bad. And now, well, it's pretty damn close to good. Well, I mean, it is good. Again, this, this, this point, you know, we're, we're not dealing with points, plural. We're dealing with, you know, tenths of points worth of difference here. Again, a point of diminishing return. <laughs> you can get a little fussy with this stuff, but do you have to? To see, you know, a world of difference, the answer is no. Again, here, RGB, everything should be right down the middle there. They should be stacked on top of one another. And nothing ever gets perfect. Nothing gets you right there. Some things get a little better than this. Some things a whole lot worse than this. But, uh, yeah, that's what it looks like now. <laughs> and that's what it used to look like. You're seeing what I'm seeing. You know what I mean? I mean, we were 40% off in some cases. Holy Christ. <laughs> Damn near off the chart. So, uh, you know, this is what it was, and this is what it is. Now, I mean, this is a, well, this is a gamut map. There, there's another, I'm going to, when we do the advanced thing, I'll show you more, you know, a little bit more about this. But uh, all you need to know, I mean, all you really want to do here, focus on, is that uh, circle in a circle circle in a circle um you don't want anything out of the gray circle like that like this one here like that one right there as i zoom in you can see it's uh eh, it ain't quite there but it you know overall when, when you take the overall average of all these colors i mean we're coming up with a really nice well a well improved picture from where it was now i I reverted some things back to default. I have I have some of my own settings. I use some of the advanced features of this program. I do things a little different, which I'm going to get into uh, later. But uh, right now, for you guys, you're seeing what I'm seeing, and uh, you know what kind of a difference does it make? Yeah, I don't know. Eh, let's see. Uh, let's see if we can see here, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll try and bring try and bring up like a, a video or something so I can show you and. But I'm, I'm going to use this program to kind of do a before and after. So so you can literally see what it looks like with your naked eye watching a video, for example. All right, hang on. Let me find something good, and we'll get back to it. All right, what I did here real quick, I went to YouTube, and I looked for AK video, and we're going to watch something in uh, Peru. Uh, yeah, something that somebody did, you know, real high-quality mastering on. Let me uh, stop the sound there, and I'm going to pause it right there. Good enough. I'm going to bring up my tool. I, I'm going to have to zoom in, I guess, a little bit in uh, post. If I make this full screen, then I can't access this window, and, well, you're going to see what I'm talking about. This is our new color profile, this one that I created. Uh, standard sRGB uh, from, from Windows is 2.1. It's gamma 2.1. So... That's what it did look like before calibration. That's what it looks like after calibration. Before calibration. After calibration. Let this play a little bit. Moving along, moving along. Oh, wait a minute. I want to see those blocks. Yes. Let's take a look at some of these blocks. Uh, 
before calibration and after calibration before after and let's play some more yeah some freaking monkeys pretty kitty let's take a look at this guy actually I think it's a girl um, before calibration and after calibration before after so I mean you can clearly see the kind of uh, dramatic difference that uh, calibrating a TV makes and I, it's it's so worth it so worth it um, now like I said this this is just the beginner the uh, the easy stuff uh, I, I, I'm sure I got a little involved for some of you hey this stuff was terribly terribly intimidating for me as well you just got to get in the mindset that uh, you want to sit down and, and really get into it um, hopefully I've saved you a shit ton of reading because I spent oh my god I I got a at least a year <laughs> of my life just put into this off and on you, you, you know how it is but uh, you know getting bad information and then getting down to it and then testing everybody's theory yeah you can you can waste some freaking time hopefully I cut through all that shit for you um, but uh, yeah you, you can see the before and after and it's it's really easy to do the program does most of the work for you but like I said if if you're uh, if you're not going to use a computer to drive this display or your display um, you're not going to be able to create a color profile there is a way of doing it but that's for way advanced way more than I'm even going to get into in any of this uh, tutorial section on uh, either beginning or advanced I'm not even gonna go there um, because I don't use it so I couldn't walk you through it even if I wanted to but there is a way of doing it there's a third-party LUT box that you have to get for well <laughs> for doing it but if you're if you're like me and you're using a computer to drive your display this is this is well it, this is it it's dirt simple it is that easy and you will get well you saw the results you saw what you can achieve with uh, not a lot of but you still need the hardware you still need a colorimeter you gotta have it um, well if you want to go this route if you want to use a DVD method well uh, that's a different story right I mean that's, that's a lesser uh, a lesser involved version uh, if you want it to be of course you can you can also get uh, some really high-end test patterns like if you buy the uh, Spears and Munsell version uh, it's gonna cost you but uh, you know a couple of dollars not not a lot of but you're still going to need a colorimeter to use some of the functions and features that uh, they offer on that on that DVD so you know things to keep in mind you just got to pick your poison here for me I'm in it for well I mean 300 bucks that's basically all I got into it I don't I don't I do not have the Spears and Munsell disc I didn't go that I, I went from the free stuff right to the uh well, I know I'm going to need a colorimeter, so I might as well just bite my tongue and bite the bullet and just get one. So I just jumped right into that right away, and then I started using Display Cal. Uh, I mean, this is this is what, what I'm mainly going to focus on here. There is one other program, like I said, uh, that uh, I, I mentioned it in the beginning. I, I gave you some options. There's one other program that you might want to use rather than which can also work does also work with the colorimeter that I have currently of course they sell you their version of the same thing for six hundred dollars <laughs> six hundred dollars it's the same exact freaking camera it's exactly the same thing so uh, mm, yeah anyway you can do your homework on that if you want but I'm not going there um, Display Cal is is where I'm living right now. I'm camping out right there because it does everything I ask it to do, everything I need it to do. At, and you saw the results. You saw the results that I'm getting. So uh, you know, this is a second TV that I've I've calibrated. TV that I've calibrated. I've done a whole bunch of monitors, but uh, this is the second television that I've actually calibrated. And man, it's impressive. <laughs> I gotta tell you, for uh, I don't know. Once you get the hang of it, you can run through this in about 30 minutes. You know, it does not take a lot of time. So a $300 tool, 30 minutes worth of your time. And uh, yeah, well, take a look at that. So uh, I'm just uh, real quick because I can 
before, after, before, after, before, after. Mm -hmm. So you get the idea. It can make a world of difference. But, uh, yeah, so that's enough of that for now anyway. Um, I got to I gotta do, uh, well, I got to throw this on a timeline and see, see how long this actually is. I might do a two-part two part video series on this. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I I, uh, I consumed some time here, so this might be uh, part one, and maybe we'll do a part two. Well, I will do a, t a part two if it's too long. I got to do the advanced section yet, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna get there when I when, when I get there. So uh, for now, that's uh, that's basically what it is, what it's all about. <laughs>